All right, guys, uh, we had a special uh, opportunity here today from uh, our Mac Tool distributor here, uh, Brosson, uh, one of our little gadgets we like so much. I'm excited about this one. This one's new to me for one of the features. I don't know how long this has been available, but what we're attempting to do today is to check for spark. And when we check for spark ignition, the majority of people do something like this. I'm going to go ahead and just set this on here. We'll stabilize the motor if you can focus in right here. And go ahead and pull it over. Yes or no? Yep. Okay, so we got spark, and that's the way a lot of people do it. And, you know, obviously we're trying to make a video here, so it's a little awkward sometimes to hold things. But the danger to this is the fact that if you have, if this is a, a it was a running engine recently or anything else, with the spark out of the cylinder, you have the fact that uh, fuel or oil or anything else, any flammable, could create a fire. So is this pretty dangerous? Yeah. Yep. We do it all the time, I understand that. Then you get people that will do this. They'll say, well, I'll just move it away from, you know, the combustion uh, leak or whatnot, and they're going to try and do that. Then, now, I don't know if anybody noticed that. Maybe get a shot of the camera. When I grab this, I'm so used to supporting the pliers. Look at where my finger is. I'm on the metal. What's going to happen? If this spark plug wire is bad, I'm going to get zapped. Now, this looks brand new. It looks to not be a problem. I'm not going to chance that, okay? So even grabbing this would be a good idea to have a rubber glove to, to not get shocked. But the reality of it is, is this is only going to tell us a little bit of the story. And what this is going to allow us to do is just see that we have spark. But there's a lot of vehicles out there that will have spark, but they won't have spark under compression. Okay, and so I want you to think about something. Focus in on here, because this is going to look really stupid, but I'm good at it. So we are gonna, we're going to take and we're going to compress this air fuel. This is my cylinder head, okay? We're going to compress this air and fuel up here uh, to extremely high pressure, and then our ignition system has to jump this gap. So we have to send electrical energy to jump this gap in the spark plug. But can you imagine the pressure that's going against this? So what people don't realize about ignition systems is that that combustion pressure is telling the spark, you ain't coming out of here. We're going to actually hold you up. That air fuel has the capability on a weak ignition system to have so much pressure against it that the electricity won't have the energy to jump. So that's why we have to have really good, strong ignition systems. So I want you to think about this for a second. When I have this outside the cylinder, would this give me a false indication that I have spark yeah. when I don't have it under compression? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so the better way to do that is to go ahead and, and this is the ultimate way to check spark. One of, there's multiple ways to do this, is we're going to go ahead and we don't even, even need to torque it right now. We're not that concerned about it. I'm just going to set the spark plug in here. And I'm going to use one of these uh, encapsulated spark testers. I really like these because the fact that it keeps everything enclosed and I don't have to worry about a fire hazard. So I'm going to clip on to this end, and I'll explain why this Mac one I like too. Okay, now we'll focus right here. Go ahead. Can we see that? Can you see the light going, guys? All right, let's try this now. Don't touch it. A lot better. Okay, turn the lights back on. I'll tell you what, you know what I know now? I know that I have spark under compression, and that's a really good indicator because... If I'm trying to diagnose this engine and I make a real quick determination, oh, you know what, it has spark, and then I move to the mechanics of the engine or I move to the fuel system of the engine, if there's nothing wrong with this engine other than the fact that the spark is weak, how good is that carb job going to do that, you're, uh, that you just did to try and fix this vehicle? It's like really good thing. You take the engine all apart, put new rings in it, new gaskets, new seals, adjust the valves, all that, and it, ha it still has weak spark, is it going to fix it? Mm -hmm. We're going to end up going down the wrong road, spend a bunch of time and money, and uh, we're not going to fix anything. So what we'll do is, uh, by having it under compression, more than likely, if this is lighting like that, there's a really good chance that you probably have good spark. But here's what we can move into. With the MAC tester here, We could do two things. We could do outside the cylinder, or we could go here. Now, here's I gotta stress this of why I like this so much. When when um, when uh, uh, Scott brought this in here, I got really excited when I saw this. A removable tip. 
because now I could test spark plugs like this. Okay, before all we were able to do, all of these, do you see how they're just a stud? Mm -hmm. So these cheap Harbor Freight ones or whatnot were very limited in the fact that we couldn't do a whole bunch of our motorcycles, snowmobile, lawnmower engine, I mean a bunch of engines out there need this removable stud. So that's why I'm so excited about this. Looks like it's part number ET96019. All right, you know what retail is on it? Not with student discount? 21 bucks. And then if you're a student, you got to get a deep discount, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and snug this up here. And then the next step is I could go to the service manual. A lot of our manuals are not going to tell us how far this gap should be. So these numbers on here aren't telling us a whole lot uh, because we, we aren't sure what this relates to compared to what Honda says this engine should have. But I want to I give you a way to cheat and allow... Uh, any engine out there to be able to have an idea of how the spark is. Couldn't you set this gap at about the same as a spark plug gap? Yeah. Would we just we just duplicated stock, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to eyeball this, maybe make it even a little bit larger. And what we're going to shoot for is to see if we have a gap that jumps across there. So now I'll take an insert into my plug here. I'm going to take my other end, and I'm going to go ahead and clamp right onto. And actually, it doesn't matter where I clamp this. I don't have to go on the spark plug. I just have to be on a good ground. Let's kill that light. And, uh, that uh, no, let's kill that one too. And we're going to really focus right here and see, uh, see what we get here. All right, go ahead. Got a good spark? Yeah. Okay, now watch this. Clear? Yep, clear. Anytime we're messing with spark, make sure you guys do that. Ask the person to clear, get their hand off the starter button or anything else. On this small engine, it's not such a big deal, but if you're leaning up towards the starter button, you're going to get a zap? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a couple turns, and we're going to see how good this spark is. Keep going. We got pretty good spark in this thing. Turn the lights back on. Oh, at least. I mean, I have I have a, a three times the spark plug gap probably here. It might be a hundred plus, you know. That's it, it's definitely over double. So we have good spark on this. So then we would go somewhere else to determine what we would need to do. Neat tools. This is uh, why we do what we do. Is we uh, love filling our box up with those things that make us money, right? Right. That's it. Thanks, Scott.